Okay, I'm going to give you an introduction to a new coding platform. It's called EduBlocks. So I'm going to go to staging.edublocks.org. And when that comes up, I'm already logged in, but what you should do is log in using your Google account. Let me see if I can fix this a little bit better. So you, you should do, let me just sign out so you can see it. Okay, so you get to EduBlocks like this, you log in, choose Google, and choose your school account. Okay, now that you've logged in, we're logged in here, we're going to go to New, and we're going to choose Python. So this 16-year-old student, oh, I'm going to name it, so my file name, I'm going to call this... Um, let's just call it Ugly EduBlocks. Why not? So EduBlocks was created by a 16-year-old that wanted a way to show Python in blocks and have it show up as Python in code at the same time. So it's kind of cool. So for example, if I wanted to create a variable just like we did in Thunkable, if I create a variable, it's asking me, what do I want to call it? I'm going to call this my countdown. Okay, so now if I grab my new variable called countdown and I drag it here, I see that it shows up here. Now the problem is, is if I change the value of countdown, look what happens. Code changes will be overwritten. Code changes will be overwritten once you edit the blocks or save this file. So if I, for example, if I try to change this to 10, notice that it's not changing in the blocks. So what that means is anytime you want to change something, you need to make sure you're doing it in the blocks. You saw that there was another way to do it with code only, but we're not going to go there right now. Okay, so that's the first thing about EduBlocks. The second thing is it's a little different than Thunkable in that we're not going to have blocks all over the place. It's not going to be scattered all over like we did in Thunkable. In EduBlocks and with every other programming language, everything is just linear. So every single block is going to attach to this list of blocks. So you kind of have to think about the order in which things need to happen. So what I'm going to do is just show you in Python or in these EduBlocks how to create a countdown. So the start. The code starts here. We've created a variable called countdown. Now what I'm going to do is create a loop that will count down 10 times until we get to zero. So you can see if we go to loops, the loops look a little bit different in Python. For I in range number, this is what we're going to use to say I want to repeat as many times as I want. So notice it showed up here for I in range and then what number? The number I want is the countdown value. So countdown was 10. I want this to count down 10 times. So I'm going to go into here and say I want to count down 10 times. All right, what I'm going to do is print the value of that variable. So here's my print. Notice there are quotes saying hello world or print a variable. So I want to print my variable. I am going to print countdown. Now, watch what happens here. I'm just going to run this as it is. This is saying start countdown at 10 for I in range countdown. So this means loop 10 times, and I'm going to print countdown inside of this loop. So what do you think it's going to look like? Let's run it and find out. It printed countdown 10 different times. So it printed this value of 10, 10 times. Okay, so what we need to do then is actually subtract one from this countdown so that we can make it count down. So I'm going to go into my variables and I'm going to say, let's change the value of countdown. Let's do a little bit of math to it. So I'm going to pull out this. And what I want to do is I want to subtract 1 from that countdown value. 
So if I go into variables, I'm going to say from countdown, let's subtract one. Okay. So let's see what happens. So the first time through, we print the countdown, which should be 10. Then we subtract one. Now we come back up to the top, print countdown, should be nine this time, and keep going from there. So let's run it. And there they are, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. But it doesn't really feel like a countdown. They just kind of spit it all out at once. So let's put a little bit of wait time in there, just like we did before. And in Python, we use this thing called time.sleep. Now it's going to give me an error when I'm doing this on purpose. This is saying sleep for one second before we go back to the top and print the countdown again. So let's look at the error. I want to show you what an error looks like. So here's the error down here. It's a name error. And it says the name time is not defined on line seven. So let's hit stop. You can see over here, it says on line seven, but there is no line seven. That's just kind of how Python works. Even though it says the error was on line seven, it's actually here on line six. It doesn't recognize time because time is a library that we need to import. We'll talk a lot more about this later. I'm just kind of helping you get started. So here in imports, I need to import time in order to make time sleep. Notice that I put the import time at the very top. So I imported this library called time, set my countdown. I'm going to loop this, this 10 times, this countdown number of times. I'll print that number subtract one from it, wait a second, and then we'll go back to the top and print it, subtract one from it, wait a second, come back up again. So let's see what that looks like. 10, 9, 8. Now this feels like a countdown. 4, 3, 2, 1, but then nothing happens. So let's add something to make it a little bit more interesting. Let's add a print statement. So now this time I actually want to print some words that I type. So I'm going to choose the print statement that has quotes around it. I'm going to put that outside of my loop and I'm going to say blast off. All right, if I run it, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, blast off. Okay, there's your first introductory video. I'll make one more that does take some user input to make the countdown.